All right, today we're going to talk about arithmetic sequences and series. So last time we talked about just sequences, and sequences can have lots of different formats. Uh, arithmetic sequences are a specific type. Um, so I have three examples here of arithmetic sequences. Um, and if you take a minute, um, you should start to see, you know, the patterns in each of them. So this one is going up by one every, or going up by two every element. Uh, this one's going down by five. Uh, this one's going up by five. Um, so all of these you're either adding or subtracting to get to the next term. And that's what an arithmetic sequence is. All right, an arithmetic sequence is defined uh, as a sequence in which each term after the first is the sum of the previous term and what we call a common difference. Okay, we're going to use D uh, as that. Um, so the common difference we can find by taking any term and subtracting the previous term. Okay, but essentially it's just whatever you're adding to get from term to term. Alright, so our example here, find D and the next three terms. So D is our common difference. So it's whatever you're adding. So if you look, we're going from negative 12 to negative 1 to 10. So we're going up by 11, and that is our difference. Um, and if you took 10 minus negative 1, you're going to get 11 and so on. Okay, so then the next terms uh, would be adding... 11. So 10 plus 11 is 21. 21 plus 11 is 32. 32 plus 11 is 43. So the next thing we're going to do is find a formula for, in general, finding the nth term of an arithmetic sequence um, or our explicit formula. Uh, so we're just going to look at the pattern. So A1 is just going to be a1. Okay, to get to a2, we're going to take that term and add whatever our common difference is. a3 is going to be that term, a1 plus d plus another d, which makes it a1 plus two of those common differences. a4 is going to be that, so a1 plus 2d plus another d, so that will be a1 plus 3d. So what we're looking for is a pattern that we can generalize to any term. So if we look, we've got a1 plus some specific amount of d's. For 4, we added 3. For 3, we added 2. For 2, we added 1. So it's going to be a1 plus n minus 1 times d. So putting it formally, the nth term of an arithmetic sequence, a n, is a1 plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, so an example. Find the 68th term in 16, 7, negative 2. So we need to find our common difference. So you can take any term minus the previous term, um, or just look at what you are adding to get from term to term. So in this case, that's going to be negative 9. So then if I want a68, okay, that's going to be a1 plus n, which is 68 minus 1 times our common difference of negative 9. Okay, and you can type that just in your calculator. You get negative 5, 8, 7. So next example, what term in the sequence 3, 1, negative 1, negative 3 is negative 19? Okay, so our general formula, a 
n is equal to a1 plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, what term means we are solving for the variable n. Uh, so my a1 is going to be 3. My common difference here, what we're adding, is going to be negative 2. So my a n, the term I'm looking for, is negative 19. We are solving for n. Okay, so we're just going to solve. I'm going to subtract the 3. Okay, then we can divide by a negative 2, which gives me 11. And then add 1. So my n, the term number, is going to be 12. And the nice thing about this is it's easy enough to check it. You can just sit there and subtract 2 as much as you need to to get there, um, but we're trying to use the formula there. Okay, next example. Uh, if a4 is equal to negative 5 and a7 is equal to negative 9, what is a1? Um, so I'm going to write out this sequence. I've got a1, which I don't know, a2, which I don't know, a3, which I don't know, but I do know a4 is negative 5. We've got an a5, a6, and a7 is negative 9. Okay, well the common difference is going to remain consistent through the whole thing. So what I'm going to do is renumber these to find the common difference, because once I have the common difference I can go back and figure out what uh, our a1 is. So I'm going to rename this one a1, which makes this one a4. Okay, so I'm going to use my nth term formula, and I'm going to say negative 9 is equal to negative 5 plus 4 minus 1, because if this is a 4, that n is 4, times d, because that's what I'm trying to find here. Okay, uh, so add 5 and divide by 3. So my common difference here is a negative four thirds. And that's okay, we've seen a lot of positives and negatives, but they don't have to be whole numbers. The sequence itself doesn't have to be whole numbers. It just has to be something that we are adding. Uh, so now I know my common difference. Now I can find my a1. So I'm gonna go back to my original numbering where this is a1, and I can either use this one or this one. I'm gonna use this one, the, the negative five. So I'm going to say negative 5 is equal to a1, which we're trying to find, plus, if this is a4, 4 minus 1 times the common difference of negative 4 thirds. Okay, so if I simplify that part, We're just left with negative 4, so I'm going to add that to find that a1 is negative 1. Alright, so next term, arithmetic means, are terms between two non-consecutive terms of an arithmetic sequence. So you can have one arithmetic mean, you can have ten arithmetic means, um, they're just terms in between. Okay, so here's an example where we will use arithmetic means. Uh, so insert two arithmetic means between 2 and 12. So again, I'm going to write this out. So we've got 2, some number, some number, and then 12. Okay, so what I need is to find the common difference that would form this sequence. So this is a1, a2, a3, a4. So I'm going to use my nth term formula again. So I'm going to say 12 is equal to 2 plus 4 minus 1 
times the common difference. So 10 is going to equal 3d. So my common difference here is 10 thirds, which again is fine. So to form this sequence now, I have my common difference. So we're going to have 2. I'm going to add 10 thirds. So 2 would be 6 thirds. So if I add that, we're going to have 26 thirds. Sorry, 16 thirds. 10. 6 plus 10 is 16. Then we get 26. Then we get 36 thirds, also known as 12. Next, we're going to talk about series. So series are the sum of the terms of an arithmetic sequence. Uh, some notation, um, we're going to use Sn. Uh, that's going to be the sum of the first n terms. So if I want to add five terms, we'd find S5. Um, so what this looks like, the sequence, if I had the sequence 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on, the corresponding series would be 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8, and so on. Okay, so I'm going to generate a formula for finding the sum of a specific number of terms of an arithmetic sequence. Okay, so Sn, using that notation. Okay, so let's say Sn is in generic A1 plus the next term, which would be A1 plus D, plus the next term, which would be A1 plus 2D. Okay, and then we're going to run on down the line. I'm going to leave a space here, leave a space here, and I'm going to add on a n. And then I'm going to back up. So if this is a n, to get to the term before it, rather than adding d, I'm going to subtract d. So this would be a n minus d. This would be a n minus 2 d. Okay, next I'm going to rewrite this whole thing again backwards. Okay, so I'm going to start here and end here. And I'm going to line up the term. So a n, the next one was a n minus d. This is a n minus 2 d. Then we're going to have a 1 plus 2 d. a 1 plus d. And a 1. Now, for this derivation, we are going to take those two lines and we're going to add them. Okay, so I'm going to add Sn plus Sn, which gives me 2Sn. Okay, and then I'm just going to add these. So A1 plus An is going to be A1 plus An. A1 plus D plus An minus D, the Ds are going to cancel, so I'm left with A1 plus a n. Same thing is going to happen there. And so on. Here, 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 and so on. So I'm just going to write that for time. So I have a bunch of a1 plus a n's. The question is how many of them we have. Well, we have one for each of these groups. So if this is a n, that means I have n of those. Okay, uh, so I'm going to do two things to finish up this derivation. Um, I'm going to replace this a n with the nth term formula, so a1 plus n minus 1 times d. Okay, and I'm going to do two things in this last step. No, I'll do it in two steps. 2sn is equal to n. Cleaning up the inside, I've got a1 plus a1, so I have 2a1. Okay, and then I want a formula for just sn. 
So I'm going to divide by 2, which I'll just do that right up front because that will go to the whole thing. Okay, so that would be the formula for the sum. Um, so I do this derivation so you see why do we have two A1s? Why are we dividing by two? Just so you see where those things come from. So now we have the formula. The sum of an arithmetic series, Sn, is n over two times two A1 plus n minus one times d. All right, so we'll do a couple of examples with series. So find the sum of the first 27 terms of, we've got negative 14 plus a negative 8 plus a negative 2. So our common difference, what we are adding to get from term to term, is 6. So to find S27, that's going to be 27 over 2 times 2A1, which is negative 14, plus N, which is 27, minus 1 times our common difference of 6. Okay, you type all that in the calculator and our sum is going to be 1,728. Alright, last example here. How many terms of negative 6 plus negative 4 plus negative 2 plus dot 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 must be added to get a sum of 330. Well, start with our common difference. So we are adding 2 to get from term to term. And then I'm going to plug all of this information into our sum formula. So the sum we know is 330. The number of terms is what we are solving for. My a1 is negative 6. We still don't know n, but we do know the common difference. Okay, so this is my equation, so we'll do some cleanup work here. I'm going to have negative 12, I'll distribute this 2, so plus 2n minus 2. So in the parentheses, I'm going to have 2n minus 14. Then I'll distribute through this n over 2. So n over 2 times 2n is going to be n squared, and n over 2 times a negative 14 is going to be minus 7n. Um, and all of a sudden we have a quadratic. So if I have a quadratic to solve it, I get everything on one side. Okay, so we're looking for two numbers that would multiply to get 330 and add to get a negative 7. So this would take some calculator work, uh, but I will just tell you it is negative 22 and a positive 15. If I add them, I get negative 7. If I multiply them, we get 330. So either n equals 22 or n equals negative 15. Well, thinking about this, we can't have a negative number of terms, so the number of terms is going to be 22.